What? You're so weird. All right, ready, chat? It's a real story. Focus. The story of Tyler One is a story filled with love, hate, betrayal, and forgiveness. With the new influx of viewers jumping into Tyler One's channel wondering, who is this guy, and how does he have more, more viewers than Shroud, I thought it would be appropriate to make a video going over the rise, fall, and rise again of Tyler One. Twitch celebrity Erob221's brother, Tyler One, was born on March 6, 1995, in the backseat of a Pontiac G6 in Missouri. Is that wrong? No. Tyler's favorite thing to do was play football with his brother when he was younger. His skills quickly developed, and at age 7, Tyler and his brother were featured in Backyard Football 2002. Oh, that's so Over good. Over the years, his passion for football grew more and more, and out of seven whole running backs in the state of Missouri, Tyler was considered the best. His dominant features put him a cut above the rest, and he was on his way to becoming a D1 football player in college. So how did Tyler go from a local football star to a toxic league streamer? On Tyler's 14th birthday, he received a gift from his estranged father. Tyler's dad had left him at a young age and moved to East LA. So this, this shit was kills me. the first me. gift Tyler ever got from him. The gift was a Logitech G430 with a strange code on the box. The code was for a free character unlock in the up and coming game called League of Legends. The character in question was only referred to as Draven. Draven. Intrigued, Tyler downloaded League just to try it out, but little did he know, this seemingly innocent action would change history forever. He became addicted to the game immediately. He went from a happy child to an angry, toxic Neanderthal who just wanted to be left alone in the dark to play League all day. Tyler was going down a dark path. He lost all of his friends, his thick girlfriend, and even his dog banded a few times. Good one. All he wanted to do was play League of Legends. Tyler's rise to fame came in form of being featured in a popular League of Legends compilation video, where hundreds of thousands of people saw how toxic Tyler was. Whether it was flaming in alt chat, running it down mid, intentionally- Bro, what is this? Dude, what is Twitch back then? Keep put- literally, kill yourself <laughs> to hide the map. What is Twitch in 2016? Kill yourself as the 2006 Feel straw man to the chat if you missed this shit. The dude is playing. You could have. You get permanent in one second for this. Putting kill yourself in on your map. Play losing high oh elo games, God. or even keeping a revenge list like a secret diary. Tyler one redefined what it meant. So I tried to edit right here, and I had no idea what I was doing. Like, I, this took me about a, a whole day to figure out is how to take a notepad and put it to the left a little bit. I had no idea what I was doing in Adobe. Pre I had no idea. Games, or even keeping a revenge list like a secret diary. Tyler one and then watch the edits here. It makes no sense. Just watch this. No one ever caught this, but watch this. Redefined what it meant to be toxic. Why did I put Tyler there? What is this? Why is he over here? I did, I literally fucked this all up. I didn't care. It soon became common knowledge that Tyler held the record for most perma banned accounts. Even though he safely held this record at 25, it didn't stop there. Every month, he kept making new accounts getting close to or achieving challenger bro and that ui is banned. gross many big league streamers like pokimane destiny and pink sparkles along with multiple former or current pro league players began to comment on his toxic behavior what's this pussy ass voice all right so fun fact uh i didn't know how mics worked back then and i used a blue yeti but i had it facing the wrong way because i had no idea that there was a right or right way so i faced the blue yeti the wrong way and that's why you can barely hear me talk and the impact it had on League of Legends culture. I don't really respect what the guy is doing. He's gotten a lot of popularity and a lot of credit for being straight up toxic. And people watch him and they're like, they're entertained by it, right? Because like... Disgusting, man. Oh man, it's funny to be on this side of things. But then the problem with that is that it just encourages it. Other people will see that. And pretty much all of his like cult following is probably really, really toxic players. And then they start thinking it's an okay thing. They're like, oh look, this guy's getting lots of donations. This guy's getting lots of... Uh, fans, followers, for being just extremely toxic, and I, I don't support that at all, dude. How did I not get DMCA'd for this? I this song plays for forty seconds. How, dude, I don't know. Most Shout out to Nicki Minaj because it, it'll get his little butt buddies to come shit on you. But like, I could care less what anyone says. Like, if you're a fan of Tyler One, then I don't want you to be my fan. Straight up. <gasps> if Tyler was banned, he would simply make a new account and repeat the process, which only further increased his infamy. Tyler wasn't breaking any rules on Twitch. So Dude, did any of you guys watch Tyler when he was in the college dorm? God. Dude, I watched this shit. It, I bet most of you had no idea he even went to college. He... he 
This was his original setup, the college dorm. It was so fucking depressing. They couldn't permaban his stream. That's when Riot and Doublelift got together and instituted a ban. On I had no idea who Doublelift was. I, I literally just typed in League of Legends streamer. On site order I had no Tyler. idea. This meant any time Tyler was confirmed to be the person on the account, the account would instantly get permabanned. This forced Tyler to stop streaming League. Riot thought this would stop Tyler from playing League and effectively end the toxicity. Unfortunately for Riot, <coughs> Tyler's addiction to League surpassed his streaming Marcus. career, and he continued to play off-stream. The ban only increased his popularity. Everyone knew who he was and were waiting his next move. Chad, wasn't that a really good chart? Tyler tried countless ways to get unbanned from League, but despite countless angry letters, free Tyler 1 t-shirt sales, and news from his girlfriend... Dude, that was such a good one. Riot wouldn't budge. Tyler knew he had to do something to get unbanned. Classic. He had to show Riot that he had changed. Tyler decided he would become a variety streamer as a reformed, no longer toxic person. Tyler's variety streams elevated him to new heights. True, they from did. From H1Z1 while barely looking at chat. I can't say, oh dude, I bet none of you guys remember this time. I, he Okay, so here's what he did. Whenever his chat was toxic, which was pretty much every fucking day, especially when Greek was there farming tryhards, he would do no cam Sandman streams. They would just play this and do absolutely nothing. Uh. Yeah, it was terrible. To no mic, no cam, Sandman streams, the bar for entertainment was at an unprecedented level, and Tyler had become one of the biggest names on Twitch in less than a year. With big numbers comes big responsibilities, and on and off the scale, nobody knew big numbers more than Greek God X. Nice. Greek God X has played the numbers game on Twitch for years. He would constantly go to bigger streamers and try to network to get exposure, but one day, Greek decided to snipe Tyler. And Tyler being the new dude. Fun fact: I didn't know this back then. This is also the first time Tyler met Michaela. This right here is when the first time apparently Greek and Michaela stream snipe each other, and they both. This is Michaela. This is the first time they actually met. We I didn't even know that he was welcomed Greek God X with open arms. Greek joined Tyler in H1Z1, Arma 3, Bro, what, and many what, other variety dude. games. The chat loved him, and the duo made some of the best variety streams ever. Very little drama, laughs all day. She and was just 16. having fun being genuine nah, he's from Missouri. To many viewers, these were some of the best streams of Twitch history. Next to Sellout Sundays. <laughs> I really did Chance dirty with this. I actually like Sellout Sundays, and when I used this clip, I, I, I did him dirty. This is the worst. I don't know why I did this. I'm sorry. The two seemed almost unstoppable, but unfortunately, all good things must come to an end. While the streams were doing really well, Tyler started to get very bored of variety streaming. I don't know, dude. I feel... I feel like streaming is the same shit every single day for me. Like, it's like a... A cycle. Off stream, all Tyler would do is play League of Legends, and his passion to entertain 14-year-olds began to fade. With nobody knowing when Tyler would return, Many of T1's fans were left out to dry. But fortunately, Tyler's alcoholic brother E-Rob decided <laughs> Dude, to- Dude, E-Rob's streams five years ago, chat, were something else. He was, okay, none of you were there. None of you were there. Uh, cause if you were there, I'd probably permabandy from my chat from that by now. Chat, he was a 200 viewer alcoholic. All he would do is just sit there in Missouri in his basement and drink and- he would drink until he passed out on stream. It was terrible. Take the reins of the content. It was so good though. I loved every second of it. Until Tyler came back, giving the plebs a place to stay. I love this shit, man. A few months later, oh. a post made the front page of League of Legends subreddit about a comment made by Riot employee Sanjuro about Tyler 1. Riot Sanjuro stated that he hopes Tyler dies from a coke overdose or testicular cancer from all the steroids he takes. And while Sanjuro claimed it was just banter, mate, the damage has already been done. This became one of the biggest PR plunders in League of Legends history. The spotlight was now on Tyler. What would he say about the comment? Will he flame him? While this fiasco unfolded, Tyler was locked in a 12-hour League session and was way too busy to pay attention. His girlfriend, Michaela, took his phone and wrote a very well-said Twitter post Good job, showing the world that T1 was reformed. This tweet showed Tyler One had changed his way. You know what's crazy, chat, to think about? This tweet was so popular back then. Everyone was waiting for Tyler's response for the fact of what is he going to say 
against this. It only has 25,000 likes. Isn't that kind of crazy to think just how big the internet has gotten? Where that back then was one of the most monumental things that happened on Twitch. And it had 25k likes. When Dream says poop and it gets 400k. Showed Tyler1 had changed his ways. Riot then reached out to Tyler as their game was dying to Battle Royale games. True. And begged him to come back. Tyler graciously agreed. And after 613 days, Tyler1 was finally free to play League of Legends. And now it's 2018, and Tyler's- Bro, this shit's cringe. I can't watch this part, all right? This- This is my, uh... We- We're business associates now. I should not be talking about my- This shit's cringe, all right? Just know I was a viewer, all right? I was a viewer. This shit's cringe. Please, just know I was a viewer, okay? He's- He's a business associate now, all right? First, once again, playing League of Legends on Twitch, bro. but as a reformed player. To many, I he will not only go down bro. in history as the most toxic player of League of Legends, but as one of the greatest streamers of all time. Oh, Viewers love Tyler not just because he's an asshole, but for his natural ability to entertain. With many fake streamers who just do things for attention and viewers, it's nice. I've become what I hated. For the community of someone like Tyler, <laughs> who's true to his viewers and never gave up on his passion for League. Tyler has created some of the greatest content Twitch has ever seen, and there's likely much more to come. I was wrong about that. I was completely wrong. E-Rob is currently the world's largest retailer of Roblox accessories. Why did I say that? He also holds the world record for chewing the most bottle caps. That's true. I was alone, nowhere to go, and no place to call home. Ugh. My only friend was the man in the moon. Dude, I didn't even know how to spell Michaela. I think. Or maybe I just spelled it wrong. Even None of this changed, by the way. Michaela's currently using Tyler Wood's PayPal to buy more Yeezys. Isn't she getting chin surgery? Then one night as I closed my eyes, I saw a shadow flying. This is accurate. He came to me with the sweetest smile. Told me he wanted to talk for a while. He said, Peter Pan. Hey! You're damn right. I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. Mods, you can like this guy's channel. Yeah, I get a lot of comments on there. I check sometimes. It's just everyone doesn't even know who I am. Watch another. The Mitch one. Good.